In this video, I'll show you how you can evaluate answers in text entry boxes. You can use text entry boxes as a knowledge check for single word answers, and they work well for that. Unfortunately, when your learner types in a mini essay, it's not quite so easy because, of course, everyone's going to put their answer in their own words. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a solution using the contains option within a conditional advanced action that allows you to check for words but ignore the words that are not part of the answer. Okay, before I explain how this interaction is built, I'm just going to cover some of the things that are on our slide to begin with here. So we have our question stem, just a smart shape, nothing fancy here. I have uh, what looks like it's a short answer question, like one of the ones that's built into Adobe Captivate, but that's just a coincidence here. This is actually just a standard text entry box that I've set up myself, and its submit button is down here and of course matches my other navigation controls. Below that, of course, is a feedback caption, which is a multi-state object. If I go into state view, we can see that its normal state is just a transparent shape. And the correct version of this state uh, includes a correct message, reinforcing what the learner has learned. And similarly, we have an incorrect version where, uh, again, it also reinforces what the learner should have learned in this case. So I'm going to exit from that here. There's a few things that we need to do. When you arrive on this slide, I like to reset the slide much in the same way that a knowledge check slide gets reset. But because this is a custom solution, we need to write an advanced action for that. Before we do that, though, we do need some variables set up for our project to work. So I'm going to use the project drop down menu and select variables. And uh, you can see there's the variable that's created with the text entry box. We're not going to use that because these default labels don't really have any meaning. It's just text entry box 11. Presumably I've created 10 before this today. So I'm going to add new. And I like my variables to start with underscore. And the first variable I'm going to put in is addy underscore answer. And that's where I'm going to store whatever the learner types in this text entry box. I can leave the value blank for right now. And I'm going to save that. I'm also going to add another variable. And this will keep track of the number of keywords. We're looking for five keywords in the learner's answer here. So I'm going to call this underscore total underscore keywords. Again, the value can be blank for right now. I'll press save. And I like to create another variable. Uh, and I use this across the course for, for many purposes. But anytime I want to reset a variable back to no value, I usually have a variable called underscore null. And I'll save that. So let's go ahead and close the variables window and we're going to click on project once more and create our first advanced action. And this will reset the slide back to its sort of defaults, if you will. And we'll call this slide 02 reset. So the first thing we're going to do is assign our variables, add answer with the variable null. We're also going to assign total keywords with the variable null. So these are back to sort of their defaults here. The other thing we want to do, we have a next button on this slide, and I want to make sure that it's not visible until the learner has hit submit and got either correct or incorrect feedback. So we're going to hide our next button, slide two. So I can save this as an action, click OK, and click Close. Now to get that to run on slide enter, you simply go to the on enter action associated with this slide, and we select Execute Advanced Actions, 
And there it is. There's no other advanced action written so far, so it automatically selects the only one that's there. Let's take a look at our text entry box right now. We're going to do a few things. I'm going to choose the add answer variable instead of text entry box 11, which has no meaning. Now I know, of course, where the answer will be stored for this text entry box. Over in the actions tab, the on success will be an advanced action that I've yet to write, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. I'm going to get rid of the shortcut for enter. I don't want a learner to accidentally hit enter and submit their answer prematurely. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm also going to show a scroll bar. Normally a text entry box is one line that just goes on forever and ever and ever. I want it to wrap to another row. And how you do that is by adding the scroll bar to this text entry box. The scroll bar will only appear if the answer is much longer than that, but this is fine. So next we need to write our advanced action. Let's click on the project drop-down menu and select advanced actions. So I'm going to call this advanced action check answer. And we're going to need multiple tabs. Essentially, in this case, because we're searching for five keywords, we're going to need five decision tabs or five conditional advanced action decision tabs. So the first one is going to be a little more complicated to make and they're relatively easy moving forward because you can duplicate the structure uh, over and over again. So let's start with the first one, which will be for analysis. So what we're looking at normally is if something is true, do this stuff here. And of course, this is all conditions are true. We're going to change this to any of the conditions because we're going to provide it a bunch of different possibilities. You'll notice that when I add additional lines instead of and this and this and so on, it will be or this or this and so on. So the first thing we're going to look at is our addy answer variable. That's where the learner has typed in their answer and that's stored in the addy answer variable. Now, normally we say is equal to, is not equal to, is greater than or less than. But if you scroll down, there's actually a final option that most people are unaware of, and that's contains. So we're looking for a word within a much longer selection of words. And in this case here, we're going to go and type in the literal value. Now, this is the trick. I can type in analysis. But I'm not done because, of course, what if someone writes analysis with a capital A in front of it? Well, I need to check for that as well. So let's select that option. Add the answer. Contains the literal value analysis. Okay. And you'll notice the or instead of an and over here, which is exactly what we're looking for. We can cheat a little bit. We can copy this and paste it down below and then just change the last little bit here. So someone might write analyze as opposed to analysis. And again, they will need to copy this and paste it and provide a few alternatives. If I've run out of lines here, you can use the add option to add additional lines and we can paste in what we copied before and provide some alternate spellings, maybe some regional differences. So we might have perhaps a European way of spelling that. We'll go in and paste in again a few varieties to cover all the possibilities. Someone might use analyzing. So you'll need to include that sort of approach as well. So let's add another line here. And it, it's a little complicated because you basically need to cover all the possibilities that may have occurred um, you know, or could occur uh, in this case here, let's choose analyzed. 
That's a possibility as well. And again, we'll need the capital A version of that as well here. So let's do that. And it's up to you how far down this rabbit hole you want to go. You can provide as many examples. You might discover some during testing of your course and uh, you'll need to add those. And the good news is you can edit this advanced action to include additional words that you might want to check for. Uh, certainly other people might use different words. Again, we are looking for uh, the A and Addy, so you can kind of limit it to words that follow the same root, but, uh, but then you're pretty much good to go. The rest of this is fairly straightforward. We just simply, if they choose any of these words, if they type these words in um, as part of their answer, we're going to increment our total keywords variable by a value of one. Now I'm going to label this tab analysis to cover all those variations. And I need to now do this for design. So I can duplicate this decision and it makes an exact copy. I'm just going to relabel this design. And now I'm going to input in all the variations of the word design, designed, designing, and so on uh, to cover that possibility. This is basically, I'll just keep repeating this process until I have all five keywords or types of keywords that we're looking for in this answer. I'll fast forward through this so that you don't have to watch me type a bunch of keywords in. But basically, I'm going to repeat this until I have them all done. Okay, so I've got a conditional tab for all five of my keywords, analysis, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. The last thing I need to do is create a check tab where we're going to check the total number of keywords and see if it matches five. So I'm going to go over here and we'll call this one check. And this will also be a conditional advanced action. And we're going to look at that variable total keywords. And if it is equal to the literal value of five, in other words, you found an example of one of the five words there, we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to show our next button and we're also going to change the state of our feedback item to correct. Now we also need an else action for all the other situations when the total keywords is not equal to five, could be four, could be three, whatever. So we're going to copy these two lines. It's very similar. And we're going to paste those down in the else section and just make a couple, well, actually just one small change. The next slide will still be visible, but instead of showing the correct message, we're going to show the incorrect message and provide them feedback as to why they're answer was incorrect. So I can save this as an action, click OK, and now I can click Close. And we're going to run that from on success of submitting anything in our text entry box. So we're going to execute advanced actions and we'll change this to check answer if it isn't already selected and we're good to go. So now I think we're ready to test this out. Let's preview this in HTML5 in browser. So here we are on the slide with our text entry box. And what's great about this is it allows the learner to answer this question instead of selecting a predetermined set of possible answers. It's allowing them to write the answer in their own words, a mini essay, if you will. So let's go ahead and write an example that might be missing one of those stages here. So I'll just write an answer here. So I'm missing evaluate. So this should come up as an incorrect answer. So we'll go ahead and hit submit. And of course it does. I still hit my next button, but I get feedback to suggest that I'm missing some 
of the keywords to describe the five stages of training design, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. And of course, I could click the forward, next button, whatever, to continue with the course. Let's reset this and see it with the correct answer selected here. So in this case here, I'll write a different answer. Right, so there we go. Hit submit, correct. You've used all five of the keywords, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. So a really good activity that allows you to reinforce the learning that maybe occurred uh, in the previous lesson. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.